In this work, we study low-light video enhancement. We propose a novel video synthesis pipeline called SITGAN. An image signal processor pipeline is a software system that sequentially applies a number of low-level and global image processing operations to the raw data of a camera sensor. These operations may refer to denoising, demosaicing, white balance, or color transformations. In low-light conditions, a traditional ISP pipeline produces suboptimal images that are usually very dark and noisy due to a low photo count and low signal-to-noise ratio. High ISO can be used to increase brightness, but it also amplifies noise. Increasing exposure time might be a way to address these problems and better capture the actual scene information. However, long exposure is impractical for dynamic video scenes as it can introduce blur due to camera sake or object motion. Recent models have shown promising results towards mitigating the problem by utilizing deep networks to model the ISP and map short exposure RAW from the camera sensor to a target long exposure RGB image. Recent work has also attempted to extend this approach to video data. However, recording long exposure video is hard due to motion. Existing datasets of supervised training pairs for this task resort to using a tripod to collect static raw videos for input and a single long exposure image for ground truth. This results in datasets that are limited in motion and diversity in scene type. We address the data collection bottleneck for learning the raw to RGB mapping by proposing a novel video synthesis pipeline that can generate abundant dynamic video training pairs. We map videos found in the wild to a short exposure domain characterized by a camera sensor. Since there is no paired relationship between the source and target distributions, we use an intermediate long exposure domain that provides an extra, supervised training signal with a target domain. We model our video synthesis pipeline as a set of two cycle guns in a dual configuration. The first cycle gun learns an unpaired mapping between domains A and B, transforming a set of RGB videos to a long exposure sensor-specific domain. Since there is no paired relationship between these two domains, the first cycle gun works in a fully unsupervised manner. The second cycle gun learns a paired mapping between the long and short exposure domains of a specific sensor. This intermediate long exposure domain helps to bridge the gap between distributions A and C by using additional supervised information in the optimization objective. Every one of the two cycle guns of our video synthesis pipeline uses two discriminators and two generators. Here we focus on the second cycle gun, which is responsible for mapping short exposure to long exposure and vice versa. The first generator takes as input a real short exposure image and maps it into an image belonging in the long exposure domain. The second generator translates the fake long exposure back to the short exposure domain. The cycle loss between the input and the reconstructed image forces the model to correctly reconstruct its input. The discriminator DB attempts to distinguish the fake long exposure from a real long exposure image, defining an adversarial loss term. A similar cycle is performed in the opposite direction, resulting in one more cycle loss and one more adversarial loss. In this short and long exposure mapping, there are available paired data between the two domains. We exploit this paired relationship and we additionally employ an extra supervised training loss between the generated samples and the ground truth. We use the generated synthetic video data to train a forward model capable of mapping low light raw video to long exposure RGB. We adopt a previously published state-of-the-art motion model called SID Motion that is implemented as a Siamese network. 
the network accepts in the input two random raw video frames and predicts the corresponding long exposure outputs. A VGG feature loss is computed between the two outputs and the ground truth images. An additional loss term between the two predictions which encourages the outputs to be close to each other improves temporal stability. While it would be possible to use one of the train generators of our dual cycle GAN models for this task, this forward architecture is more suitable to exploit the temporal dimension of the synthetic video. Training using both synthetic and real data produces competitive results when evaluating performance under image quality and temporal stability metrics. We enable a state-of-the-art low-light motion model to better reproduce colors and reduce temporal flickering. Our experimental results on the SID motion dataset show that combining our dynamic synthetic data with real static data improves performance compared to scenarios when the same model is trained only using the real static videos. We find that adding a small portion of real data is critical for model performance, helping to close the synthetic data domain gap. In order to further investigate the effect of adding real data quantities in relation to synthetic data, we randomly sampled the original real data set to subset ranging from 2 to 80%. First, we train models using only the 129 static videos of the DRV data set. Secondly, we train models on a set of 9000 synthetic videos and then fine tune the model on the real data subsets. We observe that the addition of our synthetic data significantly improves the performance, increasing PSNR from 17 to 22, from 21 to 23, and from 24 to 25 for the cases of 2%, 5%, and 10% respectively. As the fraction of real data is increased, the gap in performance between the considered models can be observed to reduce, highlighting that the addition of synthetic data is more valuable in scenarios when the collection of real training samples is expensive or highly impractical. Thank you for your attention. Please see your paper for further details.